I'm Kath, welcome to my channel Made by Kath Craft. Thank you very much for joining me for my latest video. This video is going to be a bit of a chatty sewing catch up video. I've got a few different things to share. I've got a completed sewing project, a new dress that I made. I've also got a completed knitting project that I'll pop at the end of the video. And I've got a couple of new fabrics to share. And I've also got a current sewing project on the go that I haven't shared on here yet. So I thought I'd talk about how I'm getting on with that one too. So it's a bit of a mix in this video and it's nice to be on for catch up because my children are off school now for the summer holidays. So I've got a bit less time to come on here and share what I'm up to on the sewing front. So it's nice to be on. And my husband has taken the kids to the park this morning. So it's all lovely and quiet here. So perfect to pop on and share with you guys what I've been up to. So as usual, I'll start this video off by sharing what I'm wearing today. And today it's a lovely sunny day outside. We've had a couple of overcast days over the last day or two. So it's really nice to have the sun back out. And when I stepped outside this morning, it did feel lovely and summery with the sun shining down. It made it feel a bit warmer, which is really nice. And today I've got on a jersey dress that I made using one of my older patterns I have, although this is um, not one of my oldest versions of the dress. I've made a few versions of this pattern because it's one I really like. I really like the shape of it and I find it's a really comfy, easy dress to wear. And it's this pattern here. It's the McCall's M7561. And it's the first ever stretch pattern I tried sewing. It does say patterns designed for the beginners designed for the beginner and I think I tried this pattern before I found the indie patterns and then I went on to make a lot of indie patterns because I loved how their instructions held your hand especially when I started sewing but I still really love this pattern and um, I'll show you the line drawings it's basically a sort of classic t-shirt dress with a gathered skirt but there are loads of different options built into this pattern so you do get a lot of different choices you can really make quite a lot of different looking dresses I think using this one pattern so it's a t-shirt dress with a gathered skirt and the version I'm wearing today is kind of a classic sort of short sleeve scoop neck version. So I guess like this one here but with short sleeves. There's also this really pretty option here with a very deep um, back. That's the back of the dress. So you can make this deep sort of um, scoop back version, which I think is really pretty. And I keep thinking I'd like to try it. I just haven't got around to it. You can also make a longer skirt. I've got the sort of above the knee style skirt, but you can make a maxi style skirt out of it. And you can make a short sleeve, um, sorry, a sleeveless version too. And you can add on patch pockets. Um, and there's also this sort of more sort of boat style neckline too. So yeah, loads of different options built into this pattern. And in terms of sizing, I've got the um, Y size range, which is for extra small, small and medium. But there's also a, I think it's an Z size range or is it an X size range. There's another letter that takes you up to an extra, extra large size. So altogether, the pattern goes from a bust of 29 and a half inches up to a bust of 48 inches. That's a full size range with both the different size bands included. But yeah, it's just a really nice pattern. I love this t-shirt dress. And the version I'm wearing today is in a cotton jersey fabric. And this fabric came from an online fabric shop that has since closed down. Unfortunately, I got it ages and ages ago. But I just thought it was quite a fun print. And I quite like, um, because it's such a sort of bold print, how the dress is quite simple. So it doesn't look too busy on this kind of fairly simple t-shirt dress. And I'll stand up a bit just so you can see the sort of skirt and the gathering. It's a really nice comfy one to wear. I can't remember which size I went for. I think I might have gone for the size small and that's pretty much my measurements on the bust. The waist and hip measurements on the size small are slightly smaller than me but I think I actually found it, this pattern came a bit large and I ended up taking it in at the sides a little bit and because it's stretchy it's got a bit of ease anyway and I think the hip measurement's not too critical because it's a gathered skirt so there's quite a lot of room there. But it's a nice, comfy, relaxed one to wear. I often find myself reaching for this style of dress when I'm going to have quite an active day with the children. I know I'm going to take them out later or I'll probably go to a park or something. So yeah, it's nice and stretchy and easy to move around in if I'm racing around with them. One thing I thought I would mention about this pattern and um, that I have changed slightly in pre later versions I've made of this pattern is the way the neckline's finished because the way the pattern gets you to finish the neckline is you don't add a separate neckband, you basically just cut out the pattern pieces of the front and back and then you turn under the fabric and sort of stitch it in place. And I found it worked okay on this version, I've got quite a nice flat line neckband, but I did try it on another version of this dress in a different cotton jersey fabric. And the neckline ended up stretching out a bit on that one. So I ended up recutting out the bodice and adding on a neckband. And I think I'll do that going forward because I do find, I'm not sure the turning under method is necessarily the best method for getting a nice flat finish on the neckband. So that's worth bearing in mind. But otherwise it's a really nice 
relaxed dress pattern. It's definitely one I haven't made for a while, but I would love to try that scoop back option. I think that'd be really pretty as well. And it's a great relaxed and um, easy t-shirt dress to wear for summer. And before I move on to sharing with you my new fabrics and my current sewing projects and that sort of thing, I also wanted to share with you what my children are wearing today because they're both wearing something that I made for them too. And I don't often get to share what they're wearing in these videos. I generally just share what I'm wearing because they're often dashing off to school in their school uniform. But today they're not and they're wearing some handmade items and they were quite keen for me to take a photo of them wearing the handmade items and share with you what they are in this video. So I'll pop the picture up so you can see what they're wearing. My son has got on a handmade pair of shorts which I made using the mini Hudson pants pattern by True Bias. I haven't got a print out of that pattern but I've got the ladies pattern which is very very similar so I thought I'd show you those line drawings. But it's one of my favourite sort of joggers pattern, I really love it. I've got the women's version and the men's version and the children's version which you'll probably know if you've watched previous videos of mine. And they're just a really relaxed fit jogger pattern with an elasticated waist, little slash pockets with a nice pocket detail, quite a slim fit, cuffs at the bottom and you can add a little sort of tie around if you want to. My son likes having a tie on his, he often chooses quite a bright colour to contrast with the colour of the shorts or joggers. And for my son, I often make them as joggers and then he'll invariably wear holes in the knees and I'll end up cropping them off to shorts. And the version he's wearing today is a pair that I've cropped off into shorts from jogger length, just in a navy French terry that I got from Minerva. And I'm not sure if you can see in the photo, I mean, he's got chosen a red cord to go at the waist too, which kind of matches nicely with his red t-shirt that he's wearing. I kind of pick the t-shirt to go with the jogger and the shorts. He's not that fussed about picking out which clothes from the wardrobe he wants. As long as he's got something really comfy on, he's quite happy. And it was quite nice actually because... A couple of weeks ago, when the weather started to get a bit warmer, I pulled out a pair of older shorts of his that were kind of shop bought that were made from sort of more of a woven fabric. And he tried them on. And he was like, these are really uncomfortable. Where are my Hudson pants? Um, so, yeah, we've kind of um, given the old shorts to a charity shop because he doesn't want to wear them anymore because he finds the Hudson pants so comfy. So it was nice to know that he really enjoys wearing them and finds them really comfy. And hopefully he'll enjoy them for a while longer, I think. The mini Hudson pants pattern goes up to age 10 and he's nine at the moment, but he's on the small end for nine. So I think that hopefully that pattern will last him for a little bit longer. So that's what he's wearing. And then my daughter is wearing a dress that I made using, where's the pattern? I've got it here, somewhere here it is. This pattern here, which is the um, pansy dress pattern by Poppy and Jazz, which is so over its children's wear pattern company. It's a really nice, simple little jersey dress pattern. My daughter loves jersey dresses she finds them much more comfy than woven dresses and I made it quite a few times for her and also for my niece but it's a very simple sort of t-shirt dress with a sort of round neck and long sleeves and a gathered skirt and as you can see from my daughter's version I've just um, cropped the sleeves off to a short sleeve version for summer and I've also added a little ruffle on the hem and the pattern goes from newborn to six years and my daughter is six but I find it quite a roomy pattern so I think I've still got a while to go for fitting her which is nice it comes up quite wide so I don't think I'm even on the size six for her yet I think I might still be on the age five and then I just lengthen the skirt because she has got the length and she needs a bit of extra length so that one she's wearing there is in a cotton jersey that I got ages ago from another online fabric shop there since closed down and it's a really pretty print and I think I made it actually maybe even two years ago and I think I made it more, more sort of midi length and it's now above the knee but she still really loves wearing it because it's got that width it still fits her nicely so it was nice to see them both going out today in things that I've made for them and seeing them happy and comfy in them so that is what they're wearing today too. So now I've talked all about what I'm wearing today from my handmade wardrobe and what my son and daughter are wearing too I'll move on to sharing with you what I've been up to recently on the sewing front and the first thing I wanted to share is my new sewing make. And this is a dress I made using some really pretty cotton jersey fabric that was gifted to me by Eliza Mac Fabrics. And Eliza Mac Fabrics are an online fabric shop. I'll link their website down below. They're based in North Wales and they have a really lovely, really pretty selection of fabrics on their website, both stretch fabrics and woven fabrics. Some really lovely prints, including some children's wear prints too. And they offered me the chance to choose a fabric from the website and sew it up. So I had a lovely browse on the website and it was quite hard to choose. But I went for a really lovely cotton jersey fabric with a really pretty floral print on. This fabric here is so nice and soft and I love the print to it. It's got this sort of very deep purpley base almost with lots of flowers on. Lovely sort of pink and white colours. And I thought it was a really lovely print. And it is the softest cotton jersey fabric. It was nice to sew with too. And I sewed this up into something that I've been wanting to have in my wardrobe for a while and the hot weather's got me thinking I needed to sew it up. 
which is a very relaxed t-shirt dress. Hold up so you can see. It's just a straight fit t-shirt dress, just basically like a long t-shirt. And I found it really good for putting on at the end of the day. And um, if I've been a bit hot, just to change into, it's nice and easy to sort of chill at home wearing. And I'm going to take it on holiday. And I think I'll wear it on the beach as a beach cover up too. I'm really happy with how it turned out. And I made this by um, hacking together two different patterns. So the main top part of the t-shirt here, um, I made using this pattern here. One of my favourite t-shirt patterns, which is the Solar Sweater and Tea Pattern by Paper Cut Patterns. It's a really nice relaxed fit t-shirt and sweatshirt pattern. It's got quite a boxy shape to it and dropped shoulders and a round neck. And it's just a really nice relaxed one to wear. I've made a few versions. You can make it with this really cute ruffle on the shoulder. But for this version here, I wanted just a really simple t-shirt dress. So I omitted the ruffle and just kept it really simple. But as you can see, the kind of shoulders sort of drop shoulder. The sort of shoulder seams around there. And I do like that drop shoulder style. And in terms of sizing on this one, I've got the old pattern, but the new pattern now goes from a size one up to a size eight, which takes you from a bust of 30 inches up to a bust of 46 and a half inches. And I've always made, well, I've made the smallest size on the old pattern, but that's the equivalent of the size two on the new pattern, which is designed for a bust of 32 inches, waist of 24 inches and hips of 34 and a half inches. And I'm 32, 26, 36. So that's my bust size but the hips and waist size are slightly smaller than my measurements. But because it's such a relaxed, oversized, boxy style t-shirt, that size is absolutely fine on me, so I've never bothered grading out. So I use that for the sort of main t-shirt at the top. And then to kind of get the right shape over the hips, I could have just brought the lines down, but I wasn't sure, I'd need, I thought I needed to bring them out a little bit over the hips maybe, and I wasn't sure how much. So I decided to use the bottom of this pattern here, which is a Stevie tunic pattern by Tilling the Buttons, another, favourite pattern of mine and it is designed for woven fabrics this one but I just kind of wanted the shape of the bottom so I didn't think it would matter if I used a woven fabric pattern just to get that shape because I like how the stevie sits around my hips. I think I make the size 2 on the stevie and um, which is designed for 32 inches on the bust, 26 inches on the waist and 35 inches on the hips. Even though I'm an inch larger than that I've always found the size 2 on the stevie skirts over my hips quite nicely so I like that shape so I basically just drew the pattern pieces for the solar tea and connected them to Stevie around the waistline and took them out down to the Stevie shape. So it was a really simple, easy sort of pattern mashup. And I'm really pleased with how it turned out. Um, I ended up sort of making it just sort of around above my knee. I wanted it not too long, just something that if I was on the beach in, yeah, it wouldn't sort of drag in the sand if I was kneeling down, sort of make sandcastles and that sort of thing too much. But I'll put a picture of me wearing it so you can see what it looks like on. I'm really happy with how it turned out and I think I'll probably make a, maybe another one of these, maybe in a plain colour or a stripe or something. I think it's just quite a nice, um, relaxed, casual sort of t-shirt dress to wear, perfect for sort of popping on the beach over a bikini or just, yeah, lounging around in at home. So that's my new make and I'm really happy with how it turned out. It was really nice to finally make the sort of boxy, relaxed fit t-shirt dress I'd had in mind for quite a while and it was nice speedy simple so too and I've already reached for it quite a lot and I know I'm going to get more wear out of it when we go on holiday later in the summer so yeah I'm really happy with that one and the fabric is so lovely and soft too. So yeah, that's my latest make and now I'll move on to sharing with you my two new fabrics I've got. I've got two new viscose fabrics to share and they both came from Rainbow Fabrics we had a really lovely, um, they launched a really lovely summer viscose collection a few weeks ago and they kindly gifted me a couple of fabrics from the new collection but I saw a couple of other ones I really liked too and I went on to buy those so these are two I bought, these ones weren't gifted and I've got one I've already cut out and I'm already sewing up because I saw it and I had a specific project in mind for it and I'll share that one in a moment and then I've got one I've washed and is ready to go but I'm not sure what I want to make with it but definitely it's something summery I think so I'll share that one first is a viscose chalet fabric and it's really lovely and soft um, and lovely and drapey too and this is the fabric here so as you can see it's got a really pretty floral print on with a black base I hold up so you can see all the detail I think the colours on this one are really pretty I really like the combination of the pink and the red and the lilac and the white I think it's a really lovely colour combination and it's mostly flowers in this print but there are also some strawberries which I think are really cute and make it a bit different to a kind of classic floral print with those fruits in there too. I know there's a fruity challenge that runs every year on Instagram. I think it's run by Blossom Sandwich. I think it's happened already for this year, so I haven't been able to sew this up in time for it. But if I don't go sewing up this year, maybe I'll be able to enter next year. I don't have a lot of fruity fabrics I can think in my wardrobe, so 
nice to add a new one I think it does add a really summery feel with those strawberries on it and I got quite a lot of this fabric it was a really good price so I think I got three meters because I was thinking it might make some sort of either a two-piece set like maybe the saguaro set by Friday pattern I thought it might be quite cute as or maybe some sort of maxi dress so I'm not sure which to make really um so I think I'm going to keep it a little bit and have a think if you have um, an idea of what you think it might look good as I'd love it if you'd let me know because I'm not sure on it and but yeah, I've got plenty of fabric to play with and I just thought it was really pretty with this floral print so yeah and it's lovely it's opaque as well I think so it should be perfect for making into a sort of um dress or two-piece set or something like that so yeah that is my first fabric I'm really happy with that it's lovely quality this goes really lovely and soft and as you can see it's got really pretty drape too but yeah I'm not quite sure what to make of that one so I'm going to keep it for a little bit and have a little think and like I said if you have any ideas or suggestions I'd love to hear them for that one so that's my first fabric I've got to share and then the second fabric is one that I'm already quite a long way through making the garment that I had intended to make when I saw this fabric and the garment I'm making is I've got the pattern somewhere here it took me a moment to find what I was looking for then but I found it now which is the pattern I'm using to sew up the second fabric I got from Rainbow Fabrics and it's a pattern from this magazine here which is the Fibre Mood magazine issue number 16 and it's my first ever Fibre Mood magazine I've tried and I've made two patterns to date from it and I've really enjoyed sewing up both those patterns and the pattern I'm sewing up right now is a repeat it's the second version I've made of this pattern here which is the Fibre Mood Ermine blouse it's a really pretty blouse pattern and it's the pattern that really grabbed me from this magazine and made me want to buy it I'll show you the line drawings um, up a bit closer. So it's a really pretty, quite simple shaped blouse with a button down front. It's got quite straight fit sleeves with just a turn up um, hem on them and I quite like that. It's just very simple, no cuff or anything. And then the neckline is this round neckline that's finished with bias binding. And again, I really like that neckline. I like that it doesn't have a collar. It's really comfy to wear. So it's quite a simple style sh um, shirt or blouse, but the detail is in this lovely gathering at the front and back. There's a sort of triangular yoke at the front with this gathering down each side and I really love that detail and I think it adds a really romantic style touch to this blouse. At the back again there's a yoke and there's gathering underneath. So I thought that's really pretty how it's quite a simple blouse shape but made a bit extra special by those gathering details. Um, so I've made one version of the Ermine blouse before like I mentioned and I made it in a viscose fabric that I got from Minerva and I'll put a picture up of that blouse I made. And I really love it but I do find because the print is quite busy that ditzy floral it doesn't show off um, all the details of the blouse as much as they could be shown off, I think, if you went for a simpler kind of fabric. So when I made it, I really love it. But I thought I'd like to make another version where you can really see all the details a bit more. And I saw this fabric um, online at Rainbow Fabrics, another viscose chalet, and I thought that would make a really cute blouse and quite different to my first version. So this is the fabric here. This is my blouse in progress. As you can see, um, it's a white viscose chalet fabric with this really cute star and heart print on. And again, it's got a lovely drape to it and it's really nice and soft. But this fabric is a little bit sheer and I quite like that actually for a blouse because you can see all the details. So you can see this is the front and you can see the seam here. And I quite like how it shows off all the details of the blouse that you can't see so much on a more busy print. The back again, you can really see the seam there and the gathering underneath. I think all the details are really clear on this one. So I've been really enjoying sewing this one up. You can see the lovely bias bound neckline. I think that's a really nice finish. And there are the sleeves. I've um, hemmed the sleeves as well, but I haven't hemmed the bottom and I haven't actually got buttons. This one, I've just ordered some buttons online from eBay. I wanted to get some simple white buttons because um, I thought the print is quite busy already. So I wanted something really simple. So I'm waiting for those to arrive. I've ordered 13 millimeter buttons for it. I'm just waiting for those to arrive. In terms of sizing, the magazine has a really good size range. It goes from a UK 4 up to a UK 32, which takes you from a bust of 30 inches up to a bust of 58 inches. And for my version of the Amin, I went with the extra small size, which covers UK sizes 4 and 6. I think my measurements put me towards the top end of that size category. But when I looked at the finished garment measurements, they showed there was enough ease for me to just go with that straight category rather than thinking of grading between the size extra small and small. And I was happy with the fit on my first um, Amin blouse, so I thought I'd go with the straight size extra small again for this version. But I did make the same slight adjustments to the sizing as I made on my first version, which is just to lengthen the sleeves by one and a half inches. And I often do need to lengthen the sleeves on patterns because I do have longer arms. And then I also lengthened the body by one and a half inches just because I wanted to make sure there's plenty of length to be able to tuck into a pair of jeans. 
So yeah, I've made those two adjustments to lengthen the sleeves and the body. And then I made a couple of adjustments in terms of the construction of the blouse, because um, I wanted to make a couple of changes from my first version. The first one was in terms of interfacing the button placket. This pattern gets you to interface the full um, button placket piece, both pieces, and then you fold them over and sew them on. So you end up with sort of double interfacing on each button placket, and then sort of four layers of interfacing, I guess, once you've got the two layers of the placket on top of each other and the buttons are in place. And I found on my first version, the blouse that ended up feeling a bit stiff down the placket. So for my second version, what I decided to do was instead of interfacing the pull, full packet piece of fabric, I just added a strip of interface in the actual width of the placket. So for my two um, button plackets here, I've only got one layer of interfacing on each one, which made it a bit more fluid. And I think it works better with the viscose fabric because it's slightly less stiff than on my first version. So that's what one slight change I made. The other slight change I made in terms of the construction of the Amin blouse was the point at which I sewed the placket on. The Amin blouse instructions get you to sew the placket on after you've hemmed the blouse. So you sort of hem the placket separately and then attach it right at the end. I personally prefer to attach the placket and then hem the whole at the bottom of the blouse, including the placket all at the same time. And then I find there's no risk of ending up with a slightly different length of placket and blouse once you've hemmed it all. See, I decided to change that around. So at the moment, I've got my placket added on, but I haven't hemmed the bottom. And I think I'm going to hem the bottom once I've got all the buttonholes and buttons added on at the final point. So it's just a little change I made. But nothing major, just my personal preference to put it on at that stage. While I'm on the subject of five mood patterns, I thought I'd mention a couple of things I found really useful to know when I sewed up my first five mood patterns. So I thought I'd pass them on just in case you're new to sewing up five mood patterns too. And the first thing is, if you buy one of their paper patterns, like one of their hard copy magazines, the pattern pieces inside don't include seam allowances, so you need to add them yourself. And it's quite simple to do it. In the uh, magazine, they explain really clearly um, how much to add on and where to add them. So it's really simple to do, but it does add an extra step in the process. And you do need to make sure you do do it to be able to get the right size. So that's worth bearing in mind. I'm not sure. I think their PDF patterns might already include seam allowances, although I might be wrong there. But definitely for the paper versions, you do need to add them yourself. The second thing is that in the uh, magazine itself, they include instructions of how you construct the patterns, but they are quite limited and mostly picture based. There isn't a lot of words included. But if you go on the Five Mood website and you sign up to have an account on there, you can then access their more detailed instructions. They're really good and they include a lot more words and they hold your hand a bit more through the process than the kind of pictures in the magazine do. So I'd really recommend getting a five mood account and downloading the more detailed instructions if you are trying a five mood pattern. I found that really useful to have those instructions for the Amin blouse. But yeah, I'm really enjoying putting this blouse together. I'm looking forward to finishing it. Just need those buttons to arrive and I'll hopefully be able to share the finished blouse with you and some photographs of me wearing it sometime soon. So that's my current sewing whip and I'm really enjoying sewing that blouse up and I'm looking forward to the buttons arriving so I can finish it off. But I've got one more thing to share in this video now, which is my latest completed knitting project. And this is my first ever summery knit that I've tried. And I made it up using a kit, which I got from We Are Knitters, which is this one here. It's the We Are Knitters Saturday Top Kit. And the Saturday Top is this really cute cami top with this lovely lacy stitch detail on it. And it's got this deep V at the front and these delicate straps. And it's knitted up in the We Are Knitters The Cotton Yarn, which is a Pima cotton yarn. And I decided to go for the black colourway because I thought a black cami top would be great for summer, but also would be nice for layering up in winter potentially too. And it was really fun to give it a go, actually. I really enjoyed the lacy stitch. And I'll show you my cami top, which I've got here. And yeah, I'm really pleased how it turned out. So here it is. You can see the lacy stitch, the delicate straps and the nice V at the front and the back. It's finished off with a bit of ribbing at the top, which I guess holds it in place nicely. So I made the size medium for this kit. My measurements put me at a size small. When I did the tension gauge, I always find with the We Are Knitters kits that my tension is slightly tighter than their tension. So I sized up to the size medium and I'm happy with the fit. I think if I'd gone for the size smaller, it would end up being a bit tight. So I went with the size medium and I knitted up on the recommended needle size, which is five millimetre needles. I did have a go actually of um, go sizing up to six millimetre needles, as I thought that might be another option instead of sizing up. But I found it ended up too loosely knit and I thought the actual five millimetres gave a nice sort of size to the knitting on it. You can see the lace stitch there. The thing that took me a while on this pattern 
that I'd have a few goes at was getting the V, the tension across the V even, because you knit one side up and then the other side up. And the first time I knit it, I think I had a tight tension on one side or the other, so the V wasn't exactly even. So I had to sort of frog it back and try again. But it was worth spending the time over, and I'm quite happy with how the V has turned out now. I think it's fairly even. And then you use a little eye cord for the straps, which I thought would take a while, but actually they knit it up really quickly. And I think they're really cute, these little sort of delicate little straps, you can see. So I'm really happy with the top. I did think I might want to lengthen it, um, but actually I'm quite happy with the length based on the pattern. I didn't lengthen it in the end. I thought I'd just sew, knit it up as it went. And because it was quite quick to knit, because it's obviously just a front and back, I thought I could always, you know, add on extra length later and redo it if I needed to. But actually the length came out just fine as it is. I'm quite happy with it. And I'll put a picture up so you can see what it looks like on. I've got it on here with a pair of shorts which I made using the Megan Nielsen flint shorts pattern in a viscose linen blend and I think they go quite nicely with this um, little knit top. And this cami is actually really comfy to wear and I tried it on on a really hot day and it was lovely and breathable so I think it'll be perfect as an addition to my handmade summer wardrobe and nice to have something knitted in there too. It's funny because when I started knitting I really associated knitwear with winter and sort of cosy jumpers and cardigans and that sort of thing and I couldn't imagine wearing something knitted in the summer but actually with a cotton yarn I think it'll be perfect for summer. And the shape of this top reminds me quite a bit of the Ogden Cami by True Bias with a sort of deep V in the spaghetti straps and I really like the Ogden Cami so it's nice to have sort of a knitted equivalent too. And for this knit, it was my first time knitting using a chart of symbols, and which worked really well for the lace stitch, actually. It was a really nice way to follow the lace stitch. And so I really enjoyed trying that out. And I'd like to try out more garments using a knitting chart and sort of get more to grips with them and all the different symbols. Yeah, it was quite a lot of fun to do that. So I'm really happy with how this little cami turned out. And it was quite a quick knit too, compared to knitting something for winter with sleeves and everything. So yeah, that's my latest knitting project. So that is everything that I've been up to recently on the sewing and knitting front. So thank you very much for watching. It's been really nice to chat with you guys about what I've been up to. And if you've enjoyed this video, I would love it if you would give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, then please do consider subscribing for more sewing and knitting chat. And if you press the bell icon too, that means you'll be notified when my future videos come out. So thank you very much again for watching. I hope you have a lovely day and I'll hopefully see you again soon. Bye.